Hey, hey, what's up? Yes, it's time. Are you ready? We're ready. It's the 465th episode of Three Guys Before the Game. Our summer series continues, and oh, we got a dandy for you. We got a good one for you here. Mark Kellogg, West Virginia University's women's basketball coach, joins us. And look who else showed up. Oh, Hoppy Kirchival. Who's been absent week. and absent and I absent. Last week. Well, I mean, yeah, you were, but I mean, you'll have to pay your penance, young man. It's good yeah. brag. Hoppy's here. Senator's here. He's reliable. He's dependable. He comes in when he's supposed to. <laughs> like some right people. Shots right out of the gate. Right out shots. Out of the gate. I mean, just apologize about that, Coach Kelly. We have some internal business. You know, you probably don't you probably don't like absentee players, do you? You know, a player comes to practice like a couple days and doesn't show up for three, you probably wouldn't tolerate. That doesn't work so well in our in yeah. our in our world. Maybe here. I don't know. I don't know how y'all do it yet, yeah. but uh, not not in my world. Yeah, it normally doesn't work in broadcasting either. Coach, but don't side with Tony. I mean, no, sorry. He'll stab you because he'll stab you in the back. You'll side with him, then he'll stab you in the back. So don't go there. I'm just saying, nice to have Hoppy with us. Kind of, sort of. Three Guys Before the Game is brought to us by the Burdett Camping Center. They happen to be the only warranty forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. Visit them at burdettcamping.com. That's burdettcamping.com. Three Guys brought to us by Comax Business Systems. They just happen to be keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient for 25 years. In fact, we're thinking about putting a tag, one of those air tags on Hoppy, to check his data. Like, where is where is Hoppy? Where is Waldo? I mean, wouldn't it be nice to have one of those? Well, especially during live events. But Yeah. Exp- yeah. There he is. He's going. Oh, there his car is heading towards his house. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't we'll mean to but he opened the door. Three guys also brought to us by. Over. I appreciate it. Understood. Lou Wendell Marine Sales. All they do is sell family fun. The number one pontoon boat dealer in the state of West Virginia. Visit them at LouWendellMarineSales.com. And by GoMart. Go for good times, go for GoMart, save on gas, save on food, get your GoMart rewards card, gomart.com slash the number three guys. Gomart.com, the number three, then slash three guys. Hey, real quick, if they're listening, we could use some more Reese's peanut butter cup stuff. That's already gone. No, we don't need any more yeah, Reese's cups. Went fast. I thought about the same went thing. fast. We're down to two and two or three packs, but let's just go on to something else. Can they send us, like, something healthier? No, that's, that's excellent. Send All right, more. fine, send it. All right. On we go. So it's the first day of June as we record this. We've been calling this our summer series since like April, but I guess like now that it's June, I mean, and I know summer doesn't quote unquote start for three more weeks, longest day of the year, the 21st (laughs) coming up of June. And anyway, the summer series rolls on and we're delighted to have Mark Kellogg with us, who's probably sitting here right now going like, what in what? the world did yeah, I just get? he's thinking I've made a terrible myself, mistake. It's probably myself, like yeah. No, not at all, guys. No, this is, uh, <laughs> this is exactly what I was expecting and, uh, and wanting to do with my day-to-day. No, yeah, yeah this is great. No, we're, we're all good. Yeah. June 1 is a big day in women's basketball today. Did y'all know that? This Tell is me why. The, this is the first day we can call on the phone 2025 high school graduates. So, so this is a big, this little, legitimately, like, these are sophomores so that are just, now, say, do the math that are just now finishing their sophomore year in high school. So kids can always, they can call you. But this is the day officially that we can now reach out to Have them. you called so, today? Have oh, you made- I was, yeah, I had one uh, this morning at maybe 8.30 this morning. And so I sent them the text message, though. Like, we have a list. Each coach yeah. has their list of kids we got to talk to today. So I sent my East Coast list a message like at 8.30. And one of them responded, I can talk right now or after like 3. You I'm went like, now. Oh, my gosh, let's so go right on it. Let's go right now. Yeah. And so, like, literally, yeah, I had finished my workout. I hadn't even showered. I'm like, boom, let's go and, yeah, talk to her. And so then there's been a couple more, and I got them all set up from 2.30 all the way through today. So. Wow. So, you know, the rules have changed so much on that. Like, so how often can you now call? Let's just talk about that that young lady, that perspective. At, is it a once a week now, or is it? Oh, it's unlimited. No, it's, now a, it's, it's unlimited. Now it's game's on. Yeah, it used to be right back in the day. It was you yeah. got one phone call a week. You yeah. know, type deal. I do still try to keep it somewhere in that that seven to t- ten days, kind of some consistent communication. But no, technically, it's texting unlimited, calls unlimited. You, you know, you can do it all. We can send them mail. So they got some mail from us today that we time to get to their house on the right day. Mm-hmm. And you know, there's limitations to that. You can only do it eight and a half by eleven. But now you no figure legal, out no legal paper. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. But then you can send them like eight 
eight and a half by 11s to put together to make this nice big old poster, but each one of them is an eight and a half by 11 thing. So good. Yeah. These sweet NCA rules that we have to work around, but still um, majoring in minors. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Yep. That's so, good. uh, what do you, but what do you, how do you, and, and presumably these are players that are in demand. So you're not the only coach calling, I would imagine. So how do you, what's your pitch? How do you keep it tight so that they're not tuning you out? How do you do it? Yeah, that, that's the great question we talked about as a staff yesterday, just as they're going to get a lot of calls. You're right. These are some of the top kids in the country, probably top 30 or 40 kids in the country. So what separates us from, right. you know, anybody else, even in our messages, it was welcome to the madness of June 1, you know, like kind of just setting them up for this is, and we've actually talked about this too. Is it even worth being one of those today? Or is it better to wait? Like, what if you waited two days and then you called I think they actually would remember that conversation more than they're going to remember the conversation today because there's so many of them. So, I mean, you kind of have a plan to action or, hey, here's what I need you to do right after this. And so get them to send you either a number or answer a questionnaire, or something that triggers their mind again back to West Virginia here pretty quickly. But otherwise, yes, these kids are going to get blown up. So, today. Mark, what has changed from June 1 of the last year to June 1 of this year? So a year ago, you're doing it at Stephen F. Austin. This year, you're talking with different uh, level of player. Mm -hmm. So what fundamentally, if anything, changes in these conversations now? Well, fundamentally, I don't know that anything changes other than you're, you're correct, the level of kid we're talking to. So there's probably more, I guess, emphasis on this day here than there was previously at SFA. It, wasn't, it didn't quite have the same. Okay. It's still June 1st, and there's still going to be your list of kids. But it wasn't like, oh, my gosh, we have to today. A lot of the kids we we're going to get at SFA weren't thinking about us on June one of their junior year. They have dreams of West Virginia or power five. Mm -hmm. So we kind of almost have to wait for that to subside a little bit. And then we can go in. Reality sets in for them. Yeah, and they go like so, Stephen F. Austin, that'd be great. Yeah. It sounds like a pretty good option now mm -hmm. on June 1st after their sophomore year, eh, maybe not so much. These kids it's yes, it's th their top 30. So everybody in the country is probably, calling these kids and so you know some of them play for our in-state AAU program you know and so it may just be like I want to hey let's keep that West Virginia on your chest that's been like my mantra with some of those kids they're not even from West Virginia they just play AAU basketball fr from our state but when they go play it says West Virginia on it so mm -hmm. let's like let's keep that going let's keep West Virginia on your chest so to answer your question Hoppy I didn't really completely answer it I mean there's just things like that that you throw in there just trying to get them excited a little bit, paint a little bit of a picture, what it might look like here. Well, I want them to see. They're already in a uniform that says West Virginia. Like, we can keep that we can keep that going. I think our listeners would find it really interesting because, like, we look at it and go, oh, my gosh, the end of your sophomore year, you're starting to get calls from Power Fives. But I would submit to you probably that they already know if they're in the top 30, it's probably been since you fill in the blank, since eighth or ninth grade that they knew that they had the chance to go high, high D1. I would say so. And I, I guess I didn't say this. Probably 90% of the kids we're calling today, we've actually already talked to. They just have to call us. I hear you. So then we would tell their coach, hey, can you have so-and-so call me at 4 o'clock today? And then they go tell the recruit, who then calls my phone, and I have to answer it. Now, if I miss that call, I can't even call them back. I got you. Like, I have to wait for them to, to call me back. So we've talked to most of these kids before. So, again, it's like, it's June 1st. I already talked to them. I just now have the ability to actually pick up my Formally. phone and, yeah. and call them. Yeah. So, with that being said, so what's the next plan? Like, do you the, now the next the next ask would be, can you come up for an unofficial? Is that what you're trying to do, get them to do? Yes. So throughout the summer, we would try to you know we would give them some dates. Here's some opportunities. We'd love to have you on campus. Have you ever been to Morgantown, West Virginia? Most of the time, it's a no. Um, so then get them details and then the mailings start also. So now early on, you can only send them a questionnaire, maybe camp information. I mean, it's very, very basic. Now we can up the ante, so to speak, with some of the mailings. So now they start getting somewhat consistent mailings from us to tell our story, right? It could be academics. Where do you live when you're here? What about our program? Maybe it's about Coach Kellogg. I mean, just getting them information on us. But over the course of the next summer, maybe even fall around a football game, potentially like, hey, here's a great opportunity to come visit us, and we would love for them to do that. Yeah. The, the game has changed so much since you've started in it. Let's take the off-court stuff like you're talking about for a minute. Have, does it feel like a drastic change to you, or has it just been gradual throughout your career and you've just kind of moved along with, with each of these changes? 
Well, I think if you looked back from when I started, so this will be year 19 as a head coach, I guess like 25 overall. It would look drastic if you went from 25 years ago to now, but of course it's, it's no, it's been gradual. Um, it's been gradual from the level of, of athleticism in the women's game is what's ch- like these athletes now are at a whole different level than what they were 15, 10, 10 years ago. I mean, they're just, they're developed, they have training, they have weight, you know, they get on the weights earlier, they have their skills trainers. So that's what's been the biggest from just the athletic piece. And we've had, we have to coach them differently, right? I mean, we know about the generation and you just can't coach them the way we could 20 years ago. And I think that's where I've had to adjust the most. I mean, when I played, the louder the coach yelled, just the harder you ran through the proverbial wall, right? Like, ah, and then you would just go take off through the wall. Well, now if you don't give them the why, that's a benefit to them. They're not, (laughs) they're not running through a wall. Now, if you can explain to them why that's benefits them, they will do that. Right. And so everything, why are we doing this drill? Why am I asking you to do this? I mean, there's always the why I have to present the why, because if I don't, they're going to ask it. So system wise, have you had to adapt anything? Are you, you staying where you've always been? How do you tweak that yeah, style of play? For, well, for the most part, it stays the same with the tweaks. And that would happen year in and year out based on the roster that you have anyway. But when I started as a division two coach at Fort Lewis college way back in the day, I had seven players that could play my first year. I mean, and we so I'm, and we couldn't guard. So I was like, there ain't no way in heck we're, we can guard you for 30 seconds. So I started this like, it really was a one, two, two press at the time. And all I'm trying to do is just slow the game, just slow you down. Please pass it in the backcourt. <laughs> I want him to initiate offense with say 18 seconds on the shot clock. Cause I thought everybody's going to shoot probably before five, let's just say. So for from 18 to five, that's only 13 seconds. Like we can defend anybody for 13 <laughs> seconds, I think. And we only had seven players, so I needed the game slowed down. Well, then we got a little more athletic even at Fort Lewis, so we turned it into a 2 2 one because we wanted to pressure the ball all the time. And then I got a Division One job, and I started to recruit better athletes, and now we're really turning people over. So I've said this with Tony before, but like we led the nation in turnovers for us two years ago. And so we've been able to start to play really fast and, and take advantage of people that don't handle the ball. If you really want deep down in, there's two skills in the women's game that aren't very good, and that's ball handling and passing. So how do you take advantage of that? Well, I'm going to press you and I'm going to play zone. And we've done those two things pretty well. Um, so that's changed. That's what's changed from my philosophy is it started slow. It's, it's picked up a little bit from just a pace and a tempo over the years. But no, from, yeah, 2005 or whatever that was, we were running, the, you know, we were running that 2-2-1 and mixing our defenses. And offensively, it's changed a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, the base stays the same. Coach, you're, you are the third coach in three years at this program. The last coach was here a week and a half. Uh, the She was actually here take, a little bit. Sure she, exactly right. she, she was here a little bit long give enough. Take, give I, w- I was going to point out earlier, she she also, she was in that seat a year ago. And we and, just loved and, her to death. And uh, yeah, that didn't work. But anyway, we, we are strong. <laughs> we have a strong belief that you'll be here more than a year. Yeah, we so thank I, you. I feel good about that as well. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the, uh, and Ren kind of is making that sure that happens too. Yeah. <laughs> I think Ren was somewhat surprised by the development. So did you find things, I mean, is that hard because of the inconsistency or with the portal, does it not matter that much? Oh, no, it matters. Um, it's not the ideal situation. So if, if I went back to Fort Lewis, I was the third coach in three years mm. there as well. So I do have some experience doing this. You can overcome it easier, though, now with yeah. the portal. I mean, the hard part is we're just going to have players on this team that have been recruited by three different coaches yeah. with three different philosophies. Now, there's not, a, there's not a lot of them, but there's, there's a few of those. So we had six, essentially, when I got the job seven weeks ago now that were here as a part of the program, and we were able to keep all six. So that was like priority A, and that was good because there's some talent within that group. And then now we've added six more. But now, again, so you're going to have six new ones. You're going to have six returners. They were recruited by different people. So how does that blend? How does it mesh? Can we build some trust and some com- confidence in each other? And so that will be our probably priority A in the summer is trying to get these 12 people to know each other a little bit and care about each other. So when the going do you do gets bonding tough. bonding things? Yeah, yes. Um, we do bonding things. I If it will happen organically with the team on its own, it's a heck of a lot better than Coach Kellogg saying, hey, guys, we're going to go do this today and forcing their hand. Now, we will do that, and that will be a part of it. But again, I think if you recruit character and you have good kids, they're going to want to be around each other because they all do have have high character. Um, I've used this one with Tony to speak in a you know, throughout the state. But one of my sayings in our program is be you, but align with us. So I really, really want every kid to feel like they can be themselves because that's when I think I get the best version of them. Right? If they feel like they're themselves, every day they walk into that practice facility, 
I'm going to get the best version of them. But they have to align. Like, we are a team sport, so we all got to align together. Um, but I think that's something really, really important to me. So I think if we can get these 12 people to really feel like they can be themselves but understand, hey, we got to come together in some, some of these viewpoints, then I think we'll be just fine. That's an intangible philosophy right there that you just um, put forth. So with that being said, how has that evolved for you? How did you learn that? Did you learn that the hard way? Did you look through examples and go like, okay, this is why this team didn't fully come together? And how long did that take to figure that part of it out? Well, I think once you start to get talented teams and then maybe, which most of ours have been, I mean, we've just had success over the years, but there's years you didn't reach probably the level that you thought that team was capable of doing. I would bet, I would venture to say 90 plus percent of those years was because there was issues off the court not on the court, right? Once you get to a certain talent level, right, and you can coach a little bit, you're probably going to win the, most of those games. If we didn't achieve what I thought the level was, we just didn't quite put it all together, probably off the court. And whatever, it could have been a personality thing, it could have been issues, it could have been decisions, suspensions. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had to go through all of that where it just didn't quite all come together. Um, but where, I don't know where, where it started. I mean, I've always been a character guy. I've been a smaller circle guy. If you're in my circle, like I'm you're my person, you know, guy, girl, whether that's a coach or a player, um, you know, and so I've just been really particular on who I allow or bring in, you know, mm -hmm. it's college, it's college. I get to pick and choose essentially who we recruit, right? And your character and what, you know, tells a lot about you. And I want, I want high character people. I don't want to really worry about that 2 a.m. phone call because I got student athletes out doing something that they mm -hmm. weren't supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Have I had those? Sure, I have, right? But if they're few and far between, I think that's a little bit better. That's part of character. Do you think there's any chance, it's only been, I don't know, 20 minutes since we've been doing it, any chance whatsoever Hoppy would ever be in your circle? I think we're working on that, right, Hoppy? Like, we're, oh, yeah. this is encounter two for us. Well, so, you better, so far, you better be a close circle because he'll walk out of it. We're doing pretty good so far. Well, yeah, we're doing okay. I mean, I'm not the easiest person <laughs> to get to know. Brad will tell you that. But yeah. no, I'm, no, I'm fine. I, I, look, I'm just, I'm happy you're here and, um, when I've my brief encounters with you, you know, you, you seem to say the right things. You're happy to be here, and I hope you're here for a while and hope you have success. I mean, the, the last coach actually got some – I mean, we've had success here. Uh, no doubt. No, we've had success. It's tough league, and um, I don't know, man. I, what I was – how was it when you went home to your family and said, hey, we're going to West Virginia? They go like, well, we've never – you've never been – you haven't been, haven't been east of the Mississippi, have uh, you? No, I have not. Uh, no, they well, and what doesn't really quite there. My kids are old enough. We kept them abreast of the situation. That's right, because they're and so yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're high school age now. So, and my son, he's all about social media, and he was reading reports, and he's sending me stuff that somebody had put out that Mark Kellogg's a, a front runner for West Virginia, and so he was on it. <laughs> there wasn't any hiding it from them. Um, and all a lot of this happened around the Final Four. And we were at the Final Four as a family, so I'm leaving. Like, literally, the national championship game, I'm on the phone with Ren Baker, um, you know, talking it through. I had just met with him in Dallas right before the Final Four. So it was all – I mean, I was in meetings and having to excuse myself or the search firms calling or agents calling. So it just – so we were all together. It was pretty easy. My wife was on board. Son was completely on board. Daughter, we had to work a little bit, but that was, you know, she was an eighth grader this year and that's, that's friends tough. and her AU team out of Dallas. And so she struggled a little bit early, but was very supportive because of dad's opportunity. Now, when they came up here and they got their little bag of West Virginia gear and they got to see a home that they may potentially live in. They've completely come around. I think my son has worn a West Virginia shirt every day since the day he left here, and I'm not exaggerating. That kid, every day at school, every picture I've seen, that kid's got a West Virginia it's shirt. New gear, that's awesome. It's, it's new gear, gear, and he's happy. He got it. Ordered him a new pair of shoes the other day, and he put it out on social media. And there's some Nike Air Force ones with the logos, and he oh, yeah. he custom them up a little bit, and so you you and you you knew Ren, right? You knew you. I did. Yeah, so, 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 what, but was there an intermediary? Like, did you get on a list from a from an eight, from a firm or something? I mean, how did you all connect? Yeah, I mean, I, I've heard Ren tell the story, and he, you can, I guess, if, if that's what y'all want to talk about next week, you could ask him. But it's, I did know Ren. Ren hired me twelve years ago at Northwest Missouri State. He left six months into that tenure, <laughs> and then I left twelve months in it because he left. So I'm like, I'm out. Uh, and we had not seen each other since the day I walked into that interview in Dallas wow. um, seven weeks ago. We had not. Now we talked, you know, a couple times a year. I'd keep up from a, hey, there's a guy I need to know, an athletic director type question. Maybe jobs were coming open. Ren, what would you think about this? He might call me about a situation, um, you know, here and there. Um, but yeah, no, that was it. So I think Ren's story was he had the committee together and he kind of tasked them to go through every conference in the country 
mostly Division One, find the best coaches out of each league across the country, all 31 or 32 leagues. Let's start to get a list together of those. My name came up in that search. I think Matt Wells was the story. He had my the league that I was in, and you know, and, and from there it just, yeah, I, I would like to think it happened on merit, and I'm sure me knowing Ren helped him in his decision-making a little bit, but I would like to think I got it based on merit. That had to help your decision-making, though, too, I would think, knowing that person even just a little bit from years ago. Because I, I know that's a tough spot. You're at a place you like. You're having success. You, you also know what else is out there. How, how do you go about, you're trying to be present, you're trying to keep winning where you are, but also evaluate opportunities as they come, because I'm sure you've had others. Yeah, it's a, you definitely have to navigate that. It's not overly easy. But as I think most coaches would tell you, you're only as good as your administration. Right. And so for me, that would be an athletic director and then at the presidential level. And what is the vision of the university? What is the vision of the athletic department? Will they give us enough to succeed at the level that I or most head coaches want to succeed at? So you're waiting for those opportunities to make sure you take the right one. Right. And I just felt this. I thought Morgantown fit, West Virginia fit. I've talked about this country roads and the places that I've been. And I've joked, my wife is from Coal Strip, Montana. Like grew up in a small town in Montana, Coal Strip with the coal mines. I like, my dad grew up on a farm in Missouri. Like I am a blue collar hard worker. I've just done it the, you know, essentially the hard way from the lower levels and worked myself up. So I thought it made sense. I believe in Ren Baker and that vision. I believe, I mean, the big 12 would be what I would know, you know, better than any other league. So this fit that yes. Am I further East, but I looked at it like a great, like great. Now I can go get a whole new recruiting base, mm -hmm. right? Three hours to DC and Obviously, all the Pennsylvania, Ohio is loaded with women's basketball talent, girls' basketball, Virginia. Like, there's a whole new recruiting base that we haven't really been able to pull out of, you know, at the mid-major level. So, we have all the Big 12 blueprint, I guess, you know, places from recruiting. And now let's expand it east. And I think we get something maybe that the rest of the Big 12 doesn't get most of the time. So, you're interesting, man, because you're still young. How old are you? 47. Okay, you're a baby. 47. All of I think all of us would take 47. Hop, would you go to go back to 47? I don't I don't remember 47. Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> either I don't remember 47 either. But so you're young, you're bouncy, you've climbed. You talk about climbing the ladder. Beeline esque. John Beeline esque yes, and climbing yes. the ladder because John went community college. He went uh, D3, D2, and then Canisius, Richmond. West Virginia. So you're on that same path. Your, your winning percentage is stupid. 78%, 445 and 120. So to me, I would imagine you are absolutely giddy to go like, okay, I've been waiting for the day to coach at the power five level against the best teams night in and night out. Is, is that a large part of the log that's burning your fire? That, that's a big piece of it. Um, and I didn't always necessarily have to be that. But right. Yeah, you get going and you start to have success at Division Two, right? We play in a national championship. And then four years later, we're back in it again. And so, okay, what else can I do at this level? Win one, of course. That would have been great. Um, but we didn't, weren't able to do that. But we had been in them, right? And then the Division One opportunity. Well, man, I really want to go compete at that level and see if I can do this with a little bit better athlete. And then you have success at, at SFA, which was a tremendous place, right? And then you start to, yeah, that fire keeps burning. Like, man, what could I do with a... I've said like with a national brand, like the flying WV now, when you walk around like, hey, go Mountaineers, or you're out recruiting, and it's so recognizable that it allows you to recruit at, at a national, international level, which we've never been able, you know, I've never been at a school that allows you to do that. So yes, they're burning, I just, I'm, I'm, I have a burning desire to be the best. I mean, that's really what it is. So professionally, or my teams, or whatever that is, I don't, I was never chasing necessarily mm -hmm. something or a certain job but if the right one presented itself yeah I wanted to, I was confident enough in my abilities to say yeah I, I want to go get a crack at that all right now back all the way up let's talk about how you got into this when did you think you wanted to be a coach when did you know you wanted to be a coach how did you start yeah good question so I went to college thinking I was going to sports broadcast so my sophomore year, I did an internship at the tv station in Sherman Texas where I was going to school and that internship consisted of at night, and those were like Friday nights, Texas high school football oh, in the yeah. fall. That's big. And I'm is that big? It's big. Yeah. It, it's legitimately big. Well, I was the intern guy that had to sit in the studio and take all the high school football scores yeah. and punch yeah. them in. Okay, so this is at 1020 at night, right? Well, guess what all my college buddies were doing at 1020 on a Friday night? Not taking high school scores. Not taking high school scores. So... I was like, man, I don't know if this is what I want to do. I don't know if I want to be up here at 10:20 at night and I'm in college and they're having fun and I'm waiting to go have my fun. So 
I just like, I just don't know about this. And even in high school, I'd done an internship at a radio station because I thought that's what I wanted to do. Well, the women's coach at actually at the school that I played at always kept telling me, hey, Mark, you would be a great coach. And I had never told her I was even questioning what I wanted to do. So I was getting a degree in communications, end up getting a drink degree in communications and exercise science once I decided I wanted to coach. Mm -hmm. So I started going that way. I went and did a, I was a graduate assistant on the men's side for a couple of years. And then that, the lady that was coaching at that school got the job at Montana state. So I had just got my master's working on the men's side. She's at Montana state. I'm 24, I guess, and an opportunity to go be a division one assistant in Bozeman, Montana. I had no idea that Bozeman was north of Yellowstone National Park. <laughs> like, I thought, yeah, heck yeah, yeah, I'm there. I'm in Montana. I don't even know where. I mean, I hadn't looked at a map. I didn't care. Didn't and I get up there, and Yellowstone is south of Bozeman. I'm like, where in the world? <laughs> what did I just do? But anyway, yeah, four years later, I meet my wife, and it's one of the greatest so places you were there I've for, ever lived. You were there for four. I was, yeah, four years. Isn't so. it amazing how when you start putting the threes, the fours, I was there four, I was there five, all of a sudden it's like, adds oh, up. Dang. But ghost. see, there's another example, though. It's one person, one person changed the whole course and path of your life. Yeah. She oh, says yeah. that to you, plants a seed, then ultimately hires you. Defining it's moment. remarkable how Defining often moments. that happens. Yeah, one no, person taking an interest changed your life. Yeah, absolutely. And then I think the same thing with all the, like I've had a lot of athletic directors, but there's only so many of them that hired me. Right? And that those people that gave you the chance, that's mm -hmm. the ones that you really, really, and yeah. I've had good ones that didn't hire me and that's, I'm not trying to knock them by any stretch, but there's been the few that like, they had to pull the trigger on Mark on Kellogg. She had to pull the trigger on Mark Kellogg. And then I was there those four years and she actually got let go after year three. We stayed on as interim coaches and that was not a good situation. And I was like, well, I want to control this a little bit better. So I'm going to, I need to go be a head coach. Might've been a little early, but I was 28 or 29 at the time. And I'm like, I got to do it my way. And so then I went to Fort Lewis and that was the three coaches and we had four scholarships and it was not a good situation. My favorite story at Fort Lewis, so beautiful. You ever been to Durango, Colorado? Have not. Anybody? Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Same mountainous, whitewater rafting, mm -hmm. trails, Durango, mountain ski resorts, 20 minutes up the road. Well, we had, our budgets were absolutely horrible. We were supposed to take 15 passenger vans to these games. I'm, I'm, I'm talking like 10,000 foot mountain passes. Right. Oh, like we're down in the Southwest corner, six hours to Denver. I'm like, I'm not driving a 15 passenger van in the winter in Colorado. So I'm like, what are we going to do though? So mild to wild rafting was one of the rafting companies in the town. So I'm driving through the town and I see all their like shuttle buses just sitting over here in the winter. I'm like, Hey, mild to wild rafting. <laughs> like, what do y'all do with those? Like, could I rent one of those? And they're like, what really? I'm like, yeah, I'll find a driver with the CDO come down. So I got a guy that lived an hour away, owned an ice cream shop in the summer, didn't work in the winter, got a CDL. He would come into town right the day before the game, pick up the mild to wild rafting bus, come and scoop up our team. And we traveled and won a championship in a mild to wild rafting bus That's nice. at Fort Lewis. Like like, you didn't right? have to drive. And I didn't drive for it. Never drove, right? But we pulled up and it was, we were like same colors as West Virginia. And it was blue and red, mild to wild rafting on the side of this bus. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes those rafting buses looked like the Partridge family. And that might date, but they had multicolor bus in the whole oh, thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a wild story. That so, is. I mean, we just did so many things at that. That's the beauty of being at those lower levels. And then when we get up here, I'm like the most grateful, probably the coach that we have, because I'm like, oh my God, we can do that. Like I've never been able to, like that's, that's unbelievable, you yeah. know, that we can do that from where I started. And I could go on and on about those Fort Lewis stories, but that's one that always sticks out to me is like, no, this is what we were doing Man. back then. That's a great story. Three guys before the game with Mark Kellogg brought to us by the Burdett Camping Center right now offering $10,000 off an awesome Forest River travel trailer. And Toy Hauler, you heard it right, $10,000 off. Check it out. Go to their website, BurdettCamping.com. That's BurdettCamping.com. They are the only West Virginia warranty forever dealer here in the state. Check them out at BurdettCamping.com. And so the very first time I interviewed you was the first day you came in for the press conference. And at that point, I'm concluding the interview. And I said, so um, last question for you, boy, your office and the facilities and the basketball practice, I bet you that really wowed you. And you went like, I haven't been there yet. So you, <laughs> right. you I literally, you literally had taken the job <laughs> and you did that. This might surprise people. Like you didn't come in in the dark of the night to look around. It was just like, I got here. I had taken the job and here I am. Here's the press conference. I'll walk over later and see it. Well, obviously you've been in there now almost a couple of months. So what's that to you? considering where you've been, what will that facility allow you to do recruiting wise? Yeah. So that, that we do have a top 
I don't know. I say always when you're recruiting, it's a top 15 or 20 it facility yeah. in the country. I haven't been to all of them, but this one is really, it's it's really nice. And we have every resource available for these recruits to have success. So I keep telling them, if you don't have success, I would put it back on you, the recruit, because we have the coaching staff, we have facilities, we have funding, you know, and that's on the court. And then even all the external resources from an academic and training room and medical and those types of things. So it, it yeah, it, it allows you to get your foot in the door when we showcase it or send the videos of it. It, it gets everybody's attention for sure. So at least it can't be used against you in recruiting, which mm-hmm. a lot of that's what recruiting is nowadays. It's unfortunately turned into kind of like negative recruiting, what they don't have or what this school can't do for, for you is what it, it turns into a lot. So we don't have to overcome anything there. If not, it even gives us a step up on, on everybody else. Yeah. Um, it's different, as Hoppy said earlier, because the way that it's changed in five years now of the portal and now NIL. So that's a daily change. So now you're getting into the midst of it again. You're talking to new kids starting today. How has NIL changed the process in your view? It's it, it's changed it and it's changing it every, every day. Um, and so I, I didn't deal with a ton of NIL you know, no collective, things like that at at SFA. I knew it was coming. And this has really only been in the last year plus. I mean, this is really, I mean, it's coming fast and furious at us. So it's it's a space I haven't lived in, but I got to live in it. Like this is the way it's going. Um, And we are fortunate to have a a great collective here with great support. And and that's going to help us as we continue to to get this going. Um, I would bet now, Mm, NIL with like a transfer, not a freshman right now, not these 2025s. Right. It's not coming up quite as early, but I bet with the transfer portal kids, it's within one of the top five questions, especially with a parent. Like it comes up pretty quickly. And sometimes it's an exact amount. Sometimes they just throw out some outrageous stuff out there at you. And sometimes it's just, do you have it? And and what does it look like? Um, so it, yeah, it's, it's a space we're living in, um, how you navigate it. So I think it's been interesting to see. So some schools will give every kid they all get the same amount of money, right. right? And then others is, hey, no, you can talk to the collective. It may be more of kind of salary cap-ish and, you know, some of the better players, so to speak, may get more opportunity. And that's a little more real life to me, right? Is if you're better at your job, what happens? You typically get raises. You get paid a little bit more money. If we're going to try to treat these kids like that, then, hey, that's not necessarily a bad system. But then you're going to get this whole locker room issue now coming up with, oh, maybe somebody that's not getting as much money is outperforming somebody that's getting more like oh my gosh so what's that gonna do to our locker room so when we're talking about character and culture and locker room and now we throw nil into that mix i'm not sure yet but we're gonna have to navigate it um i think so are it's you, coming so are you do, do you try to answer those questions with specific amounts or do you say it depends on performance and we'll sort that out later i mean how do well, you deal I, with it? i deflect it to uh the country roads trust because that's really they they negotiate it through the country roads trust not really through coach kellogg or or our department. Um, but legally, we, you're uh, technically you're not allowed to do that yeah, transaction. So, so that's we so don't like, do that. So that comes and that's from never done in college sports, right? That I think it's state done. to state, I believe, because there are some states I believe, like I, I'm pretty sure Kentucky, though legally it's, they like the football coach at I think it was like Eastern or Western Kentucky was controlling his in his nil. And that state allowed him to give it out. Yeah, and that's the story here saw. in the last week. The SEC is just bypassing the whole thing, as we've talked many times. They're just using their foundation side of it. University wise, so that that whole thing is changing. Yeah, daily so I think we're figuring well. that out. But Hobby, yeah. right now, no, I just it, it comes from the foundation, and I don't, I don't. It, it does keep me out of it. And I do actually like that mm-hmm. piece of it. Thankfully, thankfully, we have a good relationship with the trust, so we can have some some good dialogue. But no, it comes from them. Big Twelve as a whole, as you said, you have very very um, good experience and knowledge of these schools. You wouldn't take this job if you looked at West Virginia and said, eh. I think we can get seventh or eighth in this league. You've got high, you've got <laughs> higher aspirations for that. So how do you eat an elephant? You eat it one bite at a time. So how do you eat the Big Twelve elephant to try to get to where you want to go? What's what are the what are the steps? Yeah, well, I, I think based off of what even what they did a year ago, right, was to finish fourth, um, to give yourself a chance, right? I mean, the goal is is to win championships in the Big Twelve and then advance in the NCAA tournament, right? I mean, that's the goal for me. We, you talked about the tradition here. I, I can't remember. It's like 16, 17 NCAA tournaments in women's basketball, one sweet 16, right? So I turn that into like, that's a good and a bad, but let's turn it into the good, right? So for us or potential recruits is let's be the next team. Let's be that second team that gets to a sweet 16 or advances beyond, right? What is that state? How is the state of West Virginia going to look at you if you're a member of that 
team. They'll, they'll love you. They'll love you, yeah. right? You're going to go down as one of the greatest yes. teams that's ever played here at West Virginia. So at SFA, we felt like we were possessions away from getting to the Sweet 16. So again, going back to if we could do that at the mid-major level, like why can we, like if we can get to the tournament and get the right seed with this logo and the type of kid that I think we can recruit, I don't know why we can't advance and do something special like that. So I think, I mean, Mike Carey did an unbelievable job. Dawn was on her way. Like, it can be done here. There is, right? And, and the alums love this. Like, they absolutely love, <laughs> love, love going to school. I'm running into them. I'm on the road recruiting. Former players come up. Hey, I played at West Virginia. I'm like, wait, what? Oh, yeah, I'm on the wall right over there. This was a guy's like, how was your experience? Like, I loved every second of it. I would go back every chance I get. And so it, there's, there's a path. The Big 12's changing back to your original question, right? So in a year, Texas OU go out. We got the four new members coming in. So I think this is open. Right. I think it's a great opportunity. That's what we talked a lot about in the interview process was, man, this is the time to get in. And let's get in and let's see if we can't make, make some noise. So I think it's there. Yeah, I want to be about winning Big 12 championships and I want to be about advancing in the NCAA tournament. What was your philosophy of putting your staff together? Well, again, it's that so small circle. Who do I know? Who do I trust? So much about being a head coach is the loyalty that, that you can bring with you um, that have the same vision as you. But I don't want people that are like me. right? So I wanted to be real. I'm not going to go hire my friends. I needed to hire people that compliment me. I know what my strengths are. I know what my weaknesses are. So I need people to compliment those. Um, so when I put it together, I have three staff members that have been with me before in some previous capacity, one of which was just with me, one of which I say Oklahoma State stole a couple years ago and I stole her back. Arizona stole my director of operations a year ago and we stole her back. Um, so we've got some of the crew back together. A couple kind of the like other blues, ones. Kind of like Blues Brothers, you put the band back, back together. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah no doubt. No, that's yeah. exactly what it was. Um, uh, the two other assistants. So Erin Grant is one of our assistants. She played at Texas Tech. So she played in the Big 12. I think she's like the all time. I know she's the all time assist leader at Tech. Maybe even the Big 12 was drafted in the WNBA. So all sorts of experience was coming from Arizona. She's been at USC coaching like She's a, she's a who's who. And then J.C. Carter was the associate head coach at Texas Tech in the Big 12. And his name had come up for head coaching jobs, right? It had, yeah. Offseason. Yep, yeah. Yep. And, and I've known him, and he actually called me to run, hey, what do you think about this opportunity? And we would talk through, should he take that job or not? So I've, I've had a relationship with him. So they've been – I haven't worked with them, but they're in the, in the circle, so to speak. So really, that's what it was. It was kind of who's in the circle, who do I know, trust. I mean, at first, it was kind of like parts of the country, and I got to have a recruiter from here and there. And then it was kind of like when I started really kind of looking it through, I was like, nope, I need the people that I know that I trust. We'll figure out, I mean, we'll, we'll figure out the recruiting piece. The other part that's so important to women's basketball programs, as you know, is the community outreach. You have a daughter, a very talented girls basketball player, so you understand what that means for the kids. Camp season's coming. How do you approach the outreach part of WV women's basketball? Well, I think that's it's a huge piece of women's basketball. I think it's very relational driven with your, with your fan base, right? It's not just a product. Now we need to win, of course. But I think they'll come because of the relationship that, you know, whether it's us as a staff, but probably more importantly, my players play with the community. So, no, we, we will be out. We do have the camps coming up. So that that's a part of it. So we have the little kid camp, right, eighth, eighth grade and younger group coming. And then we have a team camp as well. And so that will give us our first look at some of the high schools in West Virginia and the surrounding states. And, you know, yeah, um, we've been out. I mean, just it's been mostly the phone because I've been going 100 miles a minute. And then we did our tour the caravan, right? I think mm -hmm. we call it here. So we did the caravan and that was good for us. And I'm going to go play golf with a couple of high school coaches tomorrow in the state. So it's just, that's a big piece of it, right? Is it's, we've got to get out. We want to be seen. We want to be the face of the entire state as far as women's basketball. Who, who do we look at? Well, that Mountaineer women's basketball team is, is kind of all eyes on them, but I've kind of done it too, where I want my players to find their passions in the community, right? Is it elderly? Is it, you know, the children's hospital? Is it just young kids? Like, what is it? And then let's go. Cause again, I can go tell them, Hey guys, we're going to go do some community service today. And they're like, oh, all right. You know, like they'll go do it, but is it really something that they're passionate about? Or let's allow them to show what their passions are. And then let's go see if we can't foster some of that. So we'll be getting onto that. Our kids get here this weekend. We start summer workouts next week. So we'll be able to have some time to, to do that. Where does your coaching philosophy, I mean, you've been head coach for a long time, but where's your coaching philosophy come from? Yeah, I mean, people you played for, I, I wasn't an assistant very long, so I was two years on the men's side, four on the women's side, but both of those coaches, um, I took some philosophies from, I think you kind of, you take some that's good, sometimes like, eh, no, I saw that coach do that, and I don't, I don't think I'm going to do that when I'm a head coach. 
Uh, but then honestly, trial, trial and error with me just because I wasn't an assistant too long. So the beauty about being at a smaller school is you can make mistakes and nobody really is watching or cares a whole heck of a lot. So, what was the biggest mistake? Give us a big mistake. Oh, um, well, I mean, well, like one was, I mean, even just this is a game mistake. So I was coaching and we were played a lot of zone, as I alluded to earlier. Last possession of the game. We need to stop. We're up one. This is in the conference tournament championship game. They call timeout. I'm like, I'm going to switch and go to man. <laughs> Freaking go to man. They run a play, drive it at us. We foul, make two free throws. And <laughs> Too clever by half, right? Right. And so from that point on, though, you know, I will ask my team now, what do y'all want to play? I, I don't care. Why do I care? I want to know what they're confident in, right? And now they might say man. And if they say man and we get scored on, then at least we're all – together or I could at least give them hey I want to play this are y'all okay with it y'all feel mm -hmm. good about it yeah we do coach okay now we're collectively on the same page so like yeah, you get better every year you coach right I mean I mean not probably for all of us right the more you do stuff the more experience you have the better you get at it that was one that still haunts me to this day we were the better basketball team we were the higher seed we should have won that game it didn't come down to the one possession but as right. a coach I mean, here I am, good. however many years later, and I'm still, <laughs> <laughs> and we're talking about it. Um, but, you know, there's been, like, things like that that I just didn't You know, there was the, the well. story, and you're a young guy comparatively, but Bobby Bowden was the head football coach here at one time, and they were playing Pitt, and they were up big at halftime. 35-7, I think. 35-7? I think something like then that. Then he called off the dogs in the second half, and Pitt came back and won. Mm -hmm. So that told him that he never had enough points. So even later in life, you know, years and years later, he would always refer back to that game. Yeah. So that was a painful, painful lesson. I think we all have those moments. I'm sure there's been some off the court, too, where you didn't handle the situation as well as, you know, as you probably could have. But, yeah, no, that's the one. I mean, there's several, but that's – that's one. What about him? Like, because you're, you're with them so much. I mean, everybody's got personal issues, some more than others. So are you, how do you, how do you handle those? Yeah. Well, I think through the recruiting process, you learn about these kids and the challenges that you, that they may have. Right. And, um, and so you're, I don't know if you're prepared for, for when those things happen, but you probably in some way and through your mind have thought through, okay, this is what this player needs like we're going to have to help him in this area of their life so then we're pretty diligent about are we connecting with the kid are we making sure we're giving them every resource to have success and then if for some reason we fail at it or they fail then we just have it's communication and so you got to bring them in and talk it through and they're going to make mistakes they're 18 to I used to say 18 to 22 now it's like 18 to 24 they yeah, got COVID, COVID years <laughs> and this year and that year and you know but they're yeah, eight, I, I mean my life guys depends on 18 to 22 24 year old women mm -hmm. right like that who I question that. Like, what, who in the world, like, signed lot, up for lot, this? A lot like, going on at that time. There, yeah. there really is. But that's also, again, that's the beauty of it, right, is once they finish and they're 22 or 24 and they leave, and, again, they may not get it at them. Most of the time it's years later when they come back to you and are like, now I get it, Coach. Now, <laughs> now, I, know, I, get, now I know what yeah, you Yeah, why were. didn't you get it back then? <laughs> I know. sure would have been nice if you would have got it back then, but at least I'm glad you got it now. Uh, let's talk about something that will make you uncomfortable. Uh, you as a player. Oh. You finished second in the nation as the player of the year at the Division Three level. So you were a baller. Man, yeah. Until I, My college coach sent me a video the other day of one of our games, and that, I wish he didn't because I had this grand <laughs> picture of my game back in college and how good I was. You didn't want to see it? You I, didn't, I did not need to see, to yeah. see that. I was like, ooh, like, yeah, that uh, – yeah. Man, my stories get better every year. They were embellished, you know, the older you get. And that definitely put me back a couple pedestals. But I, I, had, I went to the right place, right? And when, even when we talk through recruiting is find the right fit and go to the right fit. So I was going to go walk on at TCU for Mo Iba, who was the coach oh, yeah. back then. Well, he got let go that spring. So I had a roommate. I mean, I was enrolled. I was going. And Billy Tubbs took over. Yeah. Mm, I don't think – Mark Kellogg and Billy Tubb. Like I just Billy don't, Tubbs, yeah, that's yeah. probably not going to be a great opportunity. So that spring, Austin College, which was a Division three, it was an NAI school actually at the time, and went Division three. Once I got there, called. I went up for a recruiting visit. I had a passion to still play. They made me feel great. I'm like, this is cool. Like this is where I need to be. So I probably could have walked on. I could have played Division two basketball for sure. Um, but yeah, I didn't start the first eight games of my freshman year. Started every game from that point on. Left as the third or fourth all-time leading scorer and was, yeah, the whatever runner-up finalist for the D3 player of the year my senior year and averaged 20 a game. So, yeah, it was a it was a perfect situation for me. But, yeah, man, I thought I was a 
a much better player until I saw that video the other day. So when you watched that video, did you say, I wouldn't recruit you? <laughs> yeah, no, it was, uh, I didn't want my son to see it because he was like, he's, I've been painting this grand idea of, of the talent that I was. Uh, were your and, parents athletic? My, yeah, my, but yeah, both my parents were pretty athletic. My mom played college basketball at Southwest Missouri State, which is now Missouri State. And my dad did not play collegiate sports, but, you know, he was the on the softball diamond until he was 48 years old, right, playing right. shortstop and batting lead. Like, he was a... He was a good athlete. Um, so, yeah, there, there was some athletic genes. My brother played soccer at TCU, mm. and we were just 15 months apart. So we had a good, you know, I just had that growing up, and they put me in every sport. Mm-hmm. I mean, played every sport growing up. Your brother's a dude. He's a dude, isn't he? he? He's a dude. Yeah. I, I got to spend time with his yeah. brother the day of the press conference, and we were just talking, and like, he, he's a dude. He, yeah, he's a – I mean, his kind of funny story here. So, Sean Kovich, our golf coach, right? So, my brother's playing at Pinehurst Country Club a few years ago. They had played the day there at whatever bar that night. Apparently, there's a fairly long line to get drinks. My brother didn't claims he didn't see this long line, so he just works his way right up to the front of the, of the bar and orders a drink and turns around, and then he notices this long line. He tells the guy behind him, he was like, oh, crap, did I just – cut this line he's like hey man it's okay just go ahead or whatever so my brother ends up buying the guy behind him and his group a bunch of drinks because he had cut him so later that night the guy behind him walks over that was behind him in line and is like hey man what's y'all story what are y'all here for well this happens to be sean kovich our our golf coach so they end up becoming buddies so when i'm telling my brother i'm looking at this job and interviewing he's on the phone with sean hey uh, what do y'all know about this what do i tell my brother how can we help him but that's like my brother is that guy like comes here and him and Tony are over there. I can't find my brother and Tony and they're over there having a full on conversation. Oh, we're about- talking. He's a wheeler dealer, real estate. I mean, he's into that TCU athletic department. I mean, he's he got it going on. Yeah, Learfield. He knows Learfield sports. Yeah, and all he knows. Sort of, all like he- he's yeah, he's that's him. He's a mover and a shaker. Plus, because with the connection with the um, golf coach in West Virginia, which you've learned, we say all the time, everybody knows everybody. Yeah. Okay. So I'm learning quickly. Yeah. So that. like when we were on the caravan. Um, and we were traveling, right? We were, we were flying back from a location. Like it was Ren and Neil and me and you, and like, we're just chatting about this, that, and the other. And I'm thinking to myself, at some point you got to be going, what in the hell did I get myself <laughs> into? Cause we're talking, well, that person was down here and this person was over here. And then they came down to me going like, what, what, have you had those moments? Like what, this is weird. There, Yeah. There's been quite a few of those. <laughs> I mean, even just. Who was it? The I think it was the high school golf coach here in town calls my wife. He's like, hey, I hear you have two talented golfers. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, who said that? Where did that come from? Yeah. Like, I don't even know if that's really accurate. Like, this whole aura of my daughter, the basketball. I'm like, where is all Like, who is saying all of this stuff in this state to get it around? But it yes, Montana happen. was that way, too, though. Everybody yeah, knows really? everybody in the yeah. state of Montana. They even go like, what's your last name? So it's like, if you yeah, give them exactly. my wife's last name, no, oh, yeah, you're kin to da 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 yeah. da da You know, you're like, oh. Whereas in Texas, I mean, Texas is so, it's like a country. Oh, it's so, so nobody big. talks like that in Texas. But no. Was, where are you from? Do you know so-and-so? <laughs> That's so here, the next question. Where are you from, and do you know so-and-so? It's yeah. count- so here, you know it's all counties. That's what I was about to say. So yeah. I learned that one pretty quick. Yeah. I'm not kidding you. Last week, I printed off a map of West Virginia with every county. And I was going through it trying to start to learn all the counties. Okay, let me th- let me give you one. So if you uh-huh. want to seem like really cool, mm-hmm. like if you ever come across anyone and they say, you go like, where are you from? And they'll go like Jackson County. Just go like this. Go like, you know, Happy Joe Parsons. If they, if you just right, Happy, that's all you, all you have to all say. All you gotta do is like, if anyone from Jackson County, go like, you know, Happy Joe. They'll go like, hell yeah, I know Happy Joe. Yeah, that's that's that'll be your in. Then you're yeah, your you're, then you're one of them, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's somebody like that in every county, so. You know, there's only 55 people that you have to know and then connect yeah, everybody that's true. else. The odds are you'll be okay. Yeah. Just, yeah. So you mentioned that your kids have been recruited for golf at the high school level. Now, this coming week is the three-week period that starts for high school athletes in West Virginia, the, the external, the extra stuff. So your son's jumping right in, right? He, mm-hmm. he will get ready, and he'll, he's going to start doing the deal. Yeah, he'll be here Saturday. So my son comes up Saturday. They start, I guess the boys start this Monday, I think the 5th, and then the girls start the 12th. So my wife and daughter will be up here next Saturday, and my wife will be here for a few days, and then she's going to go back and tie up some of the loose ends. And so I'll have both both kids up here until we move into the house, and they can go do their summer activities and, and get going. But I, I said that jokingly about the high schools. They've been phenomenal. I mean, they, I mean they're going to end up going to Morgantown High School, and they all have all been – fantastic i don't know if they're really recruiting it was just a how did that even i heard your kids play and there's excitement and we were thrilled um about it um 
you know, and the opportunities for our kids just to go earn whatever they can earn, you know, and they need to go get it just based on their sure. ability and, and their character. So, okay, here's another uncomfortable question. So, as you're a women's basketball coach, your daughter plays basketball, and she's and since she got here, they said, well, she's, she's she's pretty good. Okay, so let's just pretend she won't listen to this. So, give me a give me a scout, give me give me a recruiting report on your daughter. Yeah, so, well, she plays like, everybody says she plays like a coach's kid, right? I mean, she is IQ, she is skilled, she can shoot it, she just, for her age as a girl basketball player, her mind plays at a different level mm -hmm. than most. She's seeing the floor. Yes. Um, she is not the best athlete on the court. She's not a bad athlete by any stretch, but she's not going to just go out there and be the best athlete. So she's going to have to use her mind and her ability and her ability to shoot and pass. And so she's a she's a point guard that, that really wants to score it, though, probably. But she can pass. She can rebound a little bit for her size. And, and she hasn't grown a ton yet. I mean, she's probably now 5'5". Five, five, you know, but we're talking about you go watch – Kids her age, you're, they're 6'2", they're 6'3", yeah. they are, like, this is a different... But she's a rising ninth grader. She will be, yeah, she'll be a ninth grader, yeah. So there's plenty of time mm -hmm. um, for her to grow. But, yeah, just she just has such a good feel. She's she's worked at it. She got kind of the it, however you describe it, mm -hmm. early on. She mm -hmm. just, she had it, and then that, and she's been in a gym her whole life watching and evaluating. And um, So, yeah, she's going to have, she's got a chance to be a pretty good, pretty good basketball player nebraska you know nebraska called her the other day did the or she had to call nebraska i guess but you know so she's oh. getting some of those you know like there's going to be opportunities for her selfishly i want her to play for dad because i want to watch her play college basketball yeah like if she didn't play for me i would never get to watch my own kid play and mm -hmm. that would be pretty hard mm -hmm. for me as as the dad mm -hmm. um but anyway we got a few years to figure yeah. this one out absolutely how did how did she change your philosophy coaching wise because obviously you coached women's basketball pre having a daughter then you have a daughter did it change did it change your style oh, no, no doubt change your appreciation uh, but even my son first when you we all if you have kids you like compassion love all of that changes <laughs> the way i viewed even other people's kids once i had my own was absolutely entirely different so yeah once you have your own and you've got that much love to go around and i would treat all my kids the way i would want my, my current players or former players the way i would want my own child to be treated and, and early on i don't know that that wasn't true i just didn't have that comparison i didn't mm -hmm. have children so i had nothing to compare that to so i was probably a little more you know fiery and emotional and getting after them and then you have kids and i think you start to take it back a, a step or two but yeah i know it changed at 100 percent changed it just makes you better it does yeah, i mean the kids the kids like you know, turn your light bulb on you go, okay right yeah because yeah. you mentioned early on when we started chatting here, like in the old days, your coach yelled louder, which means you played harder. <laughs> but that is so far <laughs> removed from how it used to be. Now they just, like, they'll stop look and they'll you. just, like, look at you and, like, what's up? And you go, like, what do you mean, what's up? Let's go. But they, they'll shut it down. Yeah, you only, now I say, I only get so many of those a year. Mm -hmm. And you got to time them. Yeah. You got to yeah. time them right, right? And it may be a half time, Like, because people ask me all the time, like, man, you really got after him at halftime. Like, maybe we weren't playing really well, and we came out in the second half and did something. I'm like, no, I, I, I didn't. We talked it through, and we made some adjustments. Like, that's all we did, right? But, I mean, I've got it asked so many times. Man, you're halftime. You must have really – it's like, mm-mm. That's a great misperception. Yeah, I think such in, a misperception. in sports yeah. in general, I think a lot of people think that every day – it's the Newt Rockney speech. Yeah. But actually, the Newt Rockney speech is probably like 2% of the time. Yeah, you don't get very many of them anymore. But, you know, and then I'll go in there and I'll be sweating my you-know-what off at halftime and I'm giving, you know, letting them have it. And, you know, but then they're like, they're like, oh, crap. Like, now they, they're they going to take onus to that, right? That doesn't happen very often. How many of those do really... you get in a season? How many of those oh, do you Oh, man, I think it depends. No, um, probably two or three. Two or three Think in a about game. That. Thirty more over thirty games. It only yeah, you probably get like two or three, and then probably practice situations isn't too far. I mean, you may get a few more than that in a practice because you got about a hundred practices and thirty games in a year, so you may get a few more of those in practice. But like now, practices, mm, come here, you know. And then you huddle them up. Hey, guys, y'all are so much better than this. Like this isn't the standard in which we like. That's how you have to talk to them. Like this when you isn't the standard. when you when you do have to go there, the truth. What what's your go to? What's the worst thing that you say? Oh, the just there be some cuss words in there that you wouldn't want. Uh, okay. You know, I mean, there's okay. just passion and kind of like start. you, Hoppy. Probably throwing I mean, out a similar few, similar yeah. when I'm upstairs. My office, Mark, is upstairs. He hosts a show in here from ten until noon, and all of a sudden it, that happens I, once in a while. You just hear this eruption. And I'm wondering, like, what in the world is going on? And But the thing is different. Like, when you do it, it's in front of players. He does it in a room by himself. <laughs> that, that Hoppy? 
fair, well, that's, is that's that a true. fair statement? I had a little something this morning. Too. Oh, I mean, you had one today, huh? Well, and I tell you, Coach, is I'm not. I'm actually I asked my wife. I'm a pretty easygoing guy. I know you. I am. I am. But okay. when, I, when I'm doing something that I've put a lot of effort into it, and I know what it should be. I know what it should be. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's not. And it's not because of something else that that somebody else is not doing their job. Hmm. That Brad's laugh, <laughs> and we always say, Brad and I say, don't make it harder. Okay. Oh and yeah. That, that's when I lose my. You know what? Because I think like, you're making. I I know what it's supposed to be. I know it can be this way. What you're doing is making this harder. Yeah. That's when I get upset. That, yeah. Oh yeah. Does that make well, sense? That almost sounds like my team. I know there's a way that you can be. You're making this harder than yeah. it needs to be. And it yeah, doesn't need yeah. to be this hard. Right. They're right. So harder. now, come yeah. on, like, now there's the passion. And I mean, my players would joke, I think, because when the sweat comes, yeah. like, then they know, like, <laughs> I, like, he's like, okay, he's not happy. Like, this isn't good enough. So basketball, you said 100 practices a year, 30-ish games. Is basketball a practice sport or a game sport? Well, yeah, practice, because you do so much more of it than It's like than Neil games. Brown says that. He goes, like. Football's a practice sport. Yeah, because well, I mean, really, I guess about every sport for the most part is, but basketball is the only one that goes over both semesters. And by NCAA rule, rule, we're allowed to have them here in the summer. So we get eight weeks in the summer to work them out. And then we have all the whole, whatever, eight-week preseason, six-week preseason. And then we got the four- or five-month season with all the practices and everything else. So it, it's a grind. It's one of those we talked to, we were talking about the other day as a coaching staff, is what do you do in the summer? How much? Do we need to just back off a little bit? Because – you know, you can wear them out a little bit, and I need them to be great in March. I don't need heroes. That's what I tell. I don't need heroes in the summer. I need heroes right. in March. Like I don't need anybody doing anything. We don't got to be in the greatest shape. You don't have to make every shot. I want you in the gym, but let's. There's moderation here. Probably could be a good thing. When we didn't do the summer, the fall was the greatest time of the year. That was the first time your full team was together. Here's your notebook for the year. Here's your <laughs> team rules. Like we're we get to that whatever school starts in August that. Doesn't even matter. And we've been right. together for eight weeks and we've done all of that and we've talked it all through. And well, here we are again. You know, they used to get here three or four days early in August. You know, when they come now, 8 p.m. on Sunday, if school starts on Monday at 8 a.m. Because they've been here all summer. They don't yeah. need to come and check stuff out. They know where their classes are. They've been on campus. So as a staff, when you meet now, what are your absolutes in these eight weeks that you have before – practice quote unquote starts what are your absolutes that you guys say we have to get this established yeah really just i i think two one is i want them to get to the off the court the get to know developing the culture the character those types of things that probably is at the top of the list um, from a basketball side of things it's the first couple of weeks we'll just be getting them back in the gym they'll be in their skill groups with their kind of positional coach Honestly, I may not even be there very much for those, kind of just let them ease into it. And then the last four to five weeks, we would put in some of the base defense, base offense. We could play a little more five-on-five, five, bring in our male practice team and let them compete a little bit to start to develop some of those competitive juices. But really, it's just, yeah, there's this base basketball understanding we would want them to have, and then this camaraderie off the court that would be the most important. That's some of it this first year, though, you've got to have some evaluation in there too, right? I mean, you're trying to figure out exactly what you have with all your – I know some of them have played for you before, but you've got more evaluation, I would think, than you will in year three, four, five. Yeah, without question. I got two weeks with the returners when I was here. So we got six workouts, which really wasn't very much, but it was something at least. Mm -hmm. And so I would probably tell you the evaluation piece is more of what's the big picture? How are we going to play? What is it going to look like? What tweaks do we make offensively rather than the individual piece? I'm learning a little bit more about that, of course. But what I'm starting to try in my mind as the head coach right now is what is this, what's it going to look like? What's the the piece of art going to look like when it's all done. I joke like every year you have like a blank canvas if you're an artist, mm -hmm. which I'm not. I can't draw at all. But rip it off every year, and it's blank. And I have, an, I have an idea of what I want that piece to look like when it's all done, but it doesn't always go that way. you got to start drawing it and then add to it and then add to it and then add to it. And hopefully by the end of it, it's a masterpiece. But I don't know right now. It's, pretty, it's as blank as blank gets because I don't know this group as well yet. Yeah. And the key is they're going to ultimately draw the picture, right? They do, yeah. It's, well, it's not really, like you're not going to say, I want to draw the Mona Lisa, and they're going to go like, no, actually, we're not going to make the Mona Lisa. It's up to them. Yeah, no, really. I mean, I have an idea of what that Mona Lisa looks like, right? And I got the big picture to look, but I need them to help navigate, you know, the day-to-day, -day, the actual drawing of it, the piecing it together. Um, so I just try to give them the big picture, the holistic, here's the parts, and here's how we get there, here's the plan. But, guys, y'all got to execute it, not me. Yeah. Yeah. Three guys before the game brought to us by the good folks at Comax Business Systems. 
They are so much more than your local copier dealer right now. They're offering you the opportunity to come in, check out your business, and give you a free price quote on your data, your security, and time for a digital phone system. They are competitively priced from one line to a thousand lines. You want to buy it? You want to lease it? You want to rent it? Whatever it might be, all options are available from one line to a thousand. It's Comax Business Systems. Visit them at ComaxWV.com. You a water guy at all? You like water? You know, like, I mean, like, I mean, clarified. Like, you mean like, like to boats? drink water? water? Or go on the, no. bo- on the water. Yeah. I mean, I need yeah. water to live. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I mean, bu- I mean uh, water in recreation. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. In Texas, we, like I grew water. up on the lake. He grew up on the lake. You know, I mean, pon- they have pontoons on that? <laughs> there were some pontoons, yeah. yeah. We, were, we were more like the ski boat type. I understand. They're, they're, yeah, I've been on plenty of pontoons. Well, you know, a pontoon can pull those uh, those rafts, I mean, as well, right? The Absolutely, tires yeah. the center, you do we, that we, with we your did. pontoon. We do. Right? Yeah. Well, Lou Wendell Marine Sales, located in St. Albans, the premier pontoon boat dealer in the state, exactly. has whatever you might need. Now, the Avalon kind of boat series, excuse me? Oh, I thought you were talking about water. Do you like water? Oh, no, like, no, no. Bottled water. I mean, something. like, as I should have probably clarified Do you like to be that. on the water? Do you like to be on the water? Thank you. Very good. Use or the in. prepositional What's phrase on. Or in. Or in. In or on. Yeah. Well, Lou Wendell Marine Sales. <laughs> Sells the Avalon pontoon boat series, which is happens to be all made 100% right here in the United States. So check them out at lewendelmarinesales.com. They sell family fun. While you're there, and you get to, the thing you'll do is you'll go buy that Lou Wendell Marine pontoon. You got to have to have treats when you're on the water. You get hungrier faster, right, Hoppy? When yeah, you're on the water, absolutely. Yeah. So you go to GoMart, yeah. right? You go to GoMart, and you up. get yourself. Like some of those, they sell a Slim Jim, Mark, at uh, Go-Mart <laughs> that's as long as a fly rod. <laughs> I mean, it's like you could just, like, cast that thing, and so you can go get fly rods, Slim Jims, you can go get Reese products, any kind of food you want, and then you get you gotta Pepperoni get rolls. Pepperoni rolls, and you can Drinks, save on beverages. beverages. And you can save on gas as well Fun because news. you get a Go-Mart rewards card. So go visit them at Go-Mart, three guys, go-mart.com slash three guys. <laughs> Cheese crackers. Three guys. Mark, what's your favorite candy? Like if you, you got a drawer if you pull a drawer out and it's your favorite candies what's in there i'm not a huge candy guy but right. probably reese like reese's probably yeah, would be good. well done probably would be the go-to He's a, yeah. are you a health guy you a health guy i think he is um ah uh, hell i work out run so i can kind of eat what i want to eat there. kind okay. of kind of deal right How far not, you, run, you were a treadmill or you run down the street or what it you dep- run? well nicer weather like right now no i don't want to be on a treadmill yeah, through so the winter you, i will be so you i'm a, a route you got a route yet in west well, virginia uh, yeah no my route right now i'm staying at the residence inn still right mm-hmm. across from the children's hospital Adjacent so it's children. kind of yeah through the the hospital by the football stadium front of the football stadium all the way up to campus and by the rec center Almost all the way That's to the Coliseum, good, oh. honestly. That's a good run. Have you way. taken on Law School Hill yet? Uh, no, I try to stay off the big hills. Okay. He's not. Yeah. He's, he's a flatlander. He's not used to. I'm not. Well, we, we had coming. some hills in Nacogdoches for sure. And my Did wife's you? a runner, and she like she like does that to herself. I choose not to. Like, why would I do that? To myself, yeah. I don't need that punishment right now. So yeah, that's so yeah, that's good. That's good. So, okay, so food wise, mm-hmm. you're gonna you get you get three meals. What are your top three to go to meals? Well, I would, I'm in Texas, so Tex-Mex, tech Mexican type yeah. food. So I would go with some, you know, like enchiladas, rice and beans, pretty traditional Mexican, like that. Very good. you know, kind of food, maybe some tacos if you want to mix that in there. Uh, steak and potatoes for sure. Yeah, there we go. I'm more mm-hmm. of like a filet, mm-hmm. filet guy with some, you know, whether mm-hmm. baked potato or baked, mashed potato. Baked, mashed, does it matter? Um, I'll go back and forth. I do like a baked potato. In Texas, uh, the big one was I started getting into the baked potato with the, like, barbecue beef yeah, on the baked see, potato. Now we're talking. Now we're going. Oh, that's, Here we go. That's a, that's a nice. Yeah. Dude, it's, that, that's, that's got density ooh, to it. Yeah. It was good. Yeah, that's a good. So yeah. maybe those three, I, I mean, that may be. Maybe yeah. the three right there. Yeah. And I can do some Italian food also, but those, I mean, that's probably the three I would go with. Coffee? Not a coffee guy at all. Oh. I'm not a hot drink guy. Mm-hmm. I don't like hot chocolate. I don't do coffee. I don't, mm. I don't do hot drinks. You don't do hot drinks? Mm-mm. Never well, have. We would go to Cowboy, Dallas Cowboy games, and it'd be 30 degrees, and everybody's got their hot chocolate. I'm like, I'll take the Dr. Pepper all day, every day, or, you know, when I was a kid, and now it's a Diet Coke. Out of so Waco, it, Texas, of course, uh, Dr. Pepper. Yeah. Hey, let me show you something. Speaking of meat. I made this. Uh, what, what is he doing? <laughs> oh, he's got. What is he doing? What's he, what's he got? This I, want show, I want to show this, this picture. Look, it does look good. It does look good. So uh, there's this kind of cooking style called sous vide, where you take something, you, you put it. You know we're still in. on the air, right? You know we're still talking. <laughs> you know we're still doing the show. Well, that's that's basically the brand of the show. Here we go. What do you mean we're on? The, we're actually we're not on the air. <laughs> we're recording, <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> 
<laughs> See, he thought yeah, I mean, for years this was live. <laughs> I mean, he thought the shit. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a style of cooking. This went off the rail. <laughs> a style of cooking called sous vide. You take a piece of meat. You can take anything. You put it in a, a vacuum sealed bag. It's in. You put it in water. There's a sous vide cylinder. It moves the water around. Long story short, you set the temperature to what exactly you want this meat to come out to be. Okay. I put this chuck roast in for 28 hours mm. at 135 degrees. I mean, look at that bad boy. Oh, that is a... Oh, oh. That looks pretty good, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, so, nobody, the people these at home like, can't see this, it. this is like fish pictures. I don't care what your food... Unless you're bringing it in here, why would I want to see your pictures? pictures. <laughs> you need to take It's like Dunlap fish. always does that. Oh, he wants always. to show you his... I don't care about your fish unless I'm eating it. Bring it in so I can eat it. Why does he think I want to see that picture? Well, because he was saying... I mean, Mark's he, polite. Mark, j Mark's yeah, being Mark's polite. polite. Why He's, do we want to see that unless you have it with you for us to eat as like, well? Like, look what I had that don't, you don't yeah, have. don't care. He, no, I think you're totally off base on this. He was saying what kind of <laughs> what kind of foods he likes. Obviously, I didn't know that he was going to be a heavy red meat guy as he is. He likes steaks. He likes potatoes. And I said, well, speaking of that, let me show you something. Would this interest you? I just texted that, by the way, to Taylor. Maybe he could show the picture uh, once it's he gets It's fine, but here's the thing. You did that to me the other night before Sportsline. You came in. You, you want me to bring me it in? Yeah. What? You want me to bring it in? Yeah, then I'm, then I'm interested in how you did it. Otherwise, I don't care. Here's a baby. Here's a here's a baby. Here's a baby. We mentioned his fly rod slim jim. Here's a baby slim jim. These are available at GoMart. Don't forget, he showed it to me. Probably showed again tonight. I don't know why. Bring the steak in, or don't show me the picture. Fine, I'll bring it in. I mean, it's not like I mean, it's not like I'm making a steak. Um, it takes 28 hours to prepare it. It's not like I'm gonna go out there. 28 hours to prepare it. You put it in there and walked away. You said so yourself. Yeah, but I mean, it's not like I can run home and say, hey, here's one that's done. It takes a while to get that done. Speaking of West Virginia and speaking of Sean Kovich, our golf coach earlier, I want to tell you a story, Hop. I told Brad this, yeah. and I'll tell since he knows Kovich. So I was at the event at the uh, coach's caravan when we went to Martinsburg. Remember, it was okay. really nice outside there at the Purple Iris. So one of the dudes that was there, listen to this, Hop. This will blow your mind. Okay. One of the dudes that was there, he's on crutches, and he, he's he's in a situation. Okay. And his name is uh, Luke Giffen, Lucas Giffen, Luke Giffen. And I know, his, I know his family because they run a funeral home out there. And so I went up to him afterward. I said, your dad told me that you got hurt pretty bad and he really broke his leg badly. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah. And I said, well, what was going on? He said, well, I was working in my backyard. I'm working on a bobcat. Oh. And he's moving earth and he's moving rocks. And he goes, here I am. He said. I'm listening to three guys before the uh -oh. game oh, no. uh -oh. on, my, on my headphones, the Sean Kovich episode. Kovich oh. was on. Mm -hmm. And I'm moving, and the thing, long story short, he gets up, it gets twisted, he moves it, the ground moves, the thing, and it flips. And he goes, oh, no. he goes heck over a handbag, and he snaps the living heck out of his leg. While he was listening to Ooh. three guys with Kovich. We have a liability issue there. Well, I mean, it may have been something you said that maybe yeah, what were wouldn't, be the, about that day. Wouldn't, wouldn't be the first guy that sent the thing. I mean, he's gone off center many, many times and off balance. So anyways, Luke, we're thinking about you, buddy. I need to check in with you to see how things are going. Probably it's been several weeks now. He's probably doing better, but it was, it's a hard thing. But yeah. anyway, I thought it was kind of wild. He was listening to three guys. With Kovic. With, with Kovic. And your brother obviously knows. So it's, it's always a West Virginia story. Even hopefully we don't do that to today to anybody, anybody right? Not. Yeah. Oh, really? yeah. Jeez. So a downer. Actually. Oh, good. There's your picture of your meeting. There Excellent. it is, folks. Take great. a look. At, take a look at that. How good did that come out? Let me tell you something. It tasted that's better that's than it actually yeah, looked. I mean, it's it looks yeah, great. Look tasted better. It tasted great. Nobody nobody else tried it. Nobody, nobody else got no it. One. Hey, listen. No one. We don't I, even yeah, know if it's I real. Guy. He's an eye guy. Listen, I'll give. I am going to bring something in next episode. There's this coffee producer down in Greenbrier County, and he's got a beer named after him, Kirchavale. And mm -hmm. it's, it's hotter than heck. It's 47. You drink beer? You drink, you'll have I, a, I drink beer. You yeah. cold beer? We'll get you some of those, too. Yeah. But they soaked the beans, Hoppy, in Kirchavale. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we're gonna, I'm going to roast the coffee. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the coffee. It's beans are roasted. I'm going to make it and bring it in to you on, um, when we tape next time. What's Speaking the, of Kirchavale, just some breaking news. It's, um, what happened? It's in a store. Excuse me. The cans are in a store now. Really? The craft beer taking the state by storm. Where's it go? Where is it? It's here in Morgantown. What store? Ashbrook Liquor Outlet in Morgantown. On Beechers? It's on the shelf. 
You want me to try and get it to on Taylor Beechhurst? on Beechhurst? Well, hell, me and Mark are driving by there on the way back up to Coliseum. <laughs> we might go in with them well, four sure. packs. Go in and see it. It'll be gone soon. Okay, perfect. I sent it to Taylor. I don't know how fast he can get it up. But. Okay. Oh, look at that. So, last, last piece of business, Mark. Sure. You inherited – you didn't inherit a schedule. You had no schedule, basically. You had three games? Is that what was uh, on? Yeah. Three, three, four, three or four, yeah. Three or four games. So, where are you at? Where are, you, where are we at now? We are still in the process of finishing <laughs> that schedule. Uh, we do have more than three or four. I bet we're up to eight. Maybe nine. And so we need, need probably – we could play up to 13 non-conference games. So I think we have contracts back on, yeah, probably eight or nine. So then there's still three or, you know, what is that, three left maybe? So it's late, dude. It's late. It's very late. This is not the ideal situation to be looking for a, for a schedule. You're right. Football's done, what, years? Decades. Years. 26 decade. years. 26 years yeah, in 20, advance. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's a COVID year. Then and, it's, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah unless it's COVID, they could play in 13 minutes. Yeah. You could like, yeah. So you think you'll, you'll fill it? You're going to get 12 or 13, you think? I don't Total. know if we can get to 13. Uh, wow. I, mean, I don't even know if the schedule from a playing dates, amount of dates to play even almost allows for 13. Um, I mean, we could probably squeeze them in, but because if we're in such a bind, some of the dates don't align to what right. you normally want them to align to. Uh, I think we'll get to 12 non-conference. I think in, in 18, obviously, Big 12 games. So that would be a 30-game yeah. schedule. We could play 31. Um, no tournament this year? No, we yeah. are, yeah. No, we're in Puerto Rico oh. um, over Thanksgiving for a tournament. That's nice. Been there several times for that. Good. Yeah, we were uh, we were there last year at, when I was at, at Stephen F. Austin in Puerto Rico. So we'll go back again. What which, hotel? What what uh, do the hotel? Royal Sinesta, I believe, oh, was Royal the name Sinesta. of the one. It was nice. It was West nice. Virginia's gone to one on a couple of occasions where it's the Hard Rock. Okay, that's Cancun. That's Cancun not Puerto is, Rico. Is it's Rock, this yeah. is San, San, eh, whatever. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Hoppy, you all right? All good. But listen, oh, look, there's there's the Kurt on the there shelf. We go. Holy Ashbrook heck, it's Liquor really, Outlet. it's really in there. stores now. It's at the Ashbrook Liquor Mart You're on in Beechhurst. Morgantown. Mm -hmm. How about Unbeaten. that? Hoppy, does that mean, is that special to you when you see something like that? I mean, that's your beer. I was with my family over in the Eastern Panhandle over the weekend, and then the conversation came up, like, you have a beer named after you. I mean, that's of all the things you've accomplished. I mean, you've been featured on CBS News. Hosted um, gubernatorial debates. Hosted Senate debates. Gubernatorial. No, this is bigger. This is bigger, this is right? Bigger. This is it, huh? This is it. This is it. It's all downhill from here, Coach. This is, I peaked. Yeah, so peaked. what happened there, Mark, was when he was featured on CBS News here, that's how long ago now, Hoppy? Tw 18, 12? It's been a year? Yeah. Yeah, So he said to the interviewer, Scott, yeah, right, Scott, Scott, he said, I, he said you, you are considered to be the Manchin whisperer because Joe Manchin comes to him when he wants information out, and he said, I don't consider myself a mansion whisperer. I consider myself a vessel. And so that was the genesis for the mm -hmm. beer. And it says on there, I'm not a, I'm not a mansion. I'm not a whisperer. I'm simply a vessel. A vessel. And that's how the yeah. beer started. It tastes it looks, really that good. That looks good. That pops yeah, on shelves. Yeah, it does. Yeah, Natasha. Natasha did a great job Student on the Student at WVU made that label. Uh -huh. And it's okay. off to the right there. And so that's, uh, that's absolutely fantastic. Hoppy, just another milestone in your illustrious Hall of Fame. Summer of Kerchival. Summer it is. Summer of 69, the summer of Kerchival. Been very good. Mark, thanks so much for uh, thanks, for coming. Mark. I hope that wasn't uh, uncomfortable or unpleasant for you. No, not one bit, guys. See? So you kind of like not us? One bit. Yeah. No, we, we can do this again if you guys would like sometime. Well, heck yeah. yeah you're We're going to do it. Still here this time I mean, next year. You yeah. know, like. <laughs> as, long as, as long as you – hey, listen. We're going to be here, Mark. We hope you are, too. <laughs> Just saying. We've been hurt. Understand we've been hurt, Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been hurt. <laughs> <laughs> we, I, been, I got you guys. I got you. We've been we've been ghosted. So three guys before the game brought to us by the Burdett Camping Center, the only warranty forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. Visit them at BurdettCamping.com. And right now, again, ten thousand dollars off that amazing Forest River Wildwood travel trailer and toy hauler. Also by Comax Business Systems, keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient for twenty five years. By GoMart. Go for good times. Go for Go Mart. And by Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans, they sell family fun. Visit LouWendellMarineSales.com. For our producer, Taylor Kennedy, for Jumpin' Jack Carlson as well. We're out. Three guys before the game coming at you next week. Next episode, WVU Athletics Director, Ren Baker. Mm. We'll talk with him. Ask him about that women's coach hire. Yeah, we'll get into that and yeah. a few other topics. Maybe another topic we're going to get into is the Big 12 refusing to use uh, Eastern time zones.
I Mark, I don't know if you know about I this. I haven't big, heard that one yet. Big problem. He might be a, watch out. He could be a central time zone guy. Well, he's here now. He's he would not probably now. like to know. Like, think about this. He'd like he, His schedule, he needs to know Eastern time. He needs to know Eastern Otherwise because he'd be an hour off. Exactly. He'll right. show up for games like, hey, wait a second, coach. It's already halftime. Sending all those <laughs> memos to from I the I Big 12 was, office. Yeah. You're playing Texas Tech at 12. Well, what, <laughs> Central? <laughs> Eastern? What time? What time are we supposed to be there? an issue. All right, we're out. Be good. See y'all. Have a great weekend and drink your Kerchivale. See you.